Welcome to Camden Harbor. This is the 77th anniversary of the Camden Windjammer fleet. These vessels have been sailing in and out of this beautiful harbor for 77 years. Wonderful old vessels coming into the harbor. Tying up here, there's going to be a whole sea of vessels in here. You'll almost be able to walk to the other side of the harbor on the, over the decks of these vessels. Here at the Camden Windjammer Festival was sponsored by none other than people like you and me. It's a nonprofit supported by the public, by volunteers, and by community businesses. We have no entrance fee. You can come and go all day long and see the wonderful exhibits that we have here today, tomorrow, and Sunday. I'm Captain Jim Sharp, one of the old uh, schooner captains here that sailed in and out of Camden. For, oh, I sailed in and out of here for 30 years, 40 years. We're here to honor these wonderful vessels here in Camden, home of the main Windjammer fleet, started by Frank Swift. Captain Frank Swift in 1936 started with a little vessel called the Mabel, and he collected all these old schooners that didn't have any work. They didn't have it. They were after the Depression. They didn't have any cargo to carry. So he would dust them out and make them ready for a windjammer cruise along the coast of Maine. He realized that the coast of Maine would attract a lot of people. I came to Camden in 1963, and the schooner Mary Day was a new vessel at that time. She was bald-headed then. They didn't have any topmasts on her at that time. Mary Day has no engine in her. She uh, carries... Uh, 29 passengers, I believe it is. Mary Day is a two-masted schooner. She's got the foremast and the mainmast. She's a gaff-headed vessel. She's got two topmasts, fore topmasts and main topmasts. You can see them, of course, up there. She's got a uh, bowsprit and jaboom on the end of the bowsprit, spreading her rig out way beyond the uh, deck length of the vessel. Gives her quite a lot of sail area way beyond the deck length of the vessel. Captain Boyd Guile, <clears throat> he brought the victory chimes up here from the Chesapeake. This model vessel, the victory chimes, built in 1900 in Bethel, Delaware, was one of 12 vessels of this type. She was known as the Chesapeake Ram, built for the Chesapeake lumber trade. From Philadelphia down the Chesapeake Bay, up and down the Chesapeake Bay, uh, an amazing vessel to have lasted all of these years from 1900 on, and still she's about 75, 70, 75 percent original. 132 feet she is on deck, 132 foot vessel, carries 40 guests, built in 1900 in Bethel, Delaware for the lumber trade. Schooner Victory Chimes, she's a National Historical Monument, Magnificent vessel, a relic from the past, uh, the only three-masted schooner in commercial service in the United States, and uh, the only three-masted commercial vessel surviving really in the United States. She's bald-headed, what they call bald-headed. In other words, she has no topmasts, but she is gaff-rigged. She has her booms and gaffs. She has a spike bowsprit, trail boards under the bowsprit with a fiddlehead, and a pretty fancy paint job. Traditional green, that green is the traditional coaster green, they called it. That's the schooner Maddie, but they changed her name to the Grace Bailey. <laughs> One of the original of Frank Swift's vessels. In 1940, she joined the, the, uh, the Swift fleet. Owned by Captain Ray Williamson, she's part of the original main Windjammer fleet. Grand old vessel, the Grace Valley. She's, she's a centerboard boat, very swift boat, very responsive vessel. She's had a lot of water sailed under her keel. Grace Bailey was built in Patchogue in 1882. Patchogue, New York, 1882. She, she actually joined the Swift fleet in 1939. 1939, one of the vessels that Frank Swift sailed in and out of here. As the schooner Maddie, in and out of here all those years, all the years that he uh, 
conducted Windjammer cruises. She was completely rebuilt in 1990. She's 123 foot overall, including that great long jib boom she has on the end of her spike bowsprit. She's 81 feet on deck. That spreads the rig quite well. The centerboard coaster, 29 passengers, National Historical Landmark. She carried lumber, hard pine, and all kinds of uh, cargo you can think of. Went to the Caribbean, worked, uh, probably brought it back to Rome, and all kinds of things like that. She was named Matty for the niece of the owner back in the early days. Came to me in 1910. Angelique, a 95-foot catch. She was built specifically for the Windjammer trade in 1980. She's a more modern vessel, but she's patterned after a 19th century sailing ship, the kind of vessels that fished off the coast of England. The Angelique uh, offers this unique deck house. She has her salon up on the deck house. It's a very nice deck house so that people in bad weather can get in there. She carries 29 passengers. She's 130 feet overall, full keel vessel. She has power in her. She has engines in her, two engines, six, uh, six uh, 471s, two for GM 471s in her. Built in Palatka, Florida in 1980, 5,200 square feet of sail, and she is slippery, that vessel. Schooner Heritage. Schooner Heritage's new vessel. Built by Doug and Linda Lee, built in Rockland. Built by hand, they did it themselves. She's 145 overall, from the jibboom to the end of the Davids in the stern. But deck length 95, she's built brand new in 1983, newest of the fleet, 1983. Two top mists, handsome, handsome schooner. Built by Captain Doug Lee and Linda Lee, both with their own elbow grease. They had their own shipyard, clever. They fashioned all their own ironwork and did it all by hand. The Heritage was built at the North End Shipyard, shipyard created by Doug Lee and John Foss. Hard to see over the uh, forest of spars here, but that vessel with the blue flag coming in over there, Nathaniel Bowditch. She was built as a racing yacht in 1922. Designed by William Hand, the same man that designed the Bowden, Schooner Bowden, the Arctic Schooner Bowden, Macmillan's Arctic Schooner Bowden. Designed by William Hand, this Bermuda racing yacht won the race in 1927. She was rebuilt totally in 1971 and carries 24 guests. Louis R. French, built in 1871, one of the oldest sailing vessels in the world, in the country here. Steaming in with his yaw boat, he's gonna go up the head of the harbor again, just like the Merry Day is, gonna do a curtsy, do a little U-turn there, stop that old boat, gonna put her right in alongside the, the Merry Day. She was built in 1871, 1871, 1871, built right in Christmas Cove here in Maine. She was a Maine schooner. Amazing, all these years she has been a workaday boat. She did have an engine in her. They put an engine in her uh, to carry bait and carry and fish back in those days. She's now 100, almost 140 years old, National Historic Landmark. Just an amazing, amazing vessel. She's been completely rebuilt. They took the engine out of her. They restored her to his, her former pure self, not adulterated by this motor business. Two, there are two vessels built in 1871, the Louis R. French and the Stephen Tabor. Both of them have been workaday vessels all their lives. She's actually a small vessel. She's only 65 feet on deck, but she's 100 feet overall. She's got 3,000 square feet of sail. She used to, the cargo vessel used to carry lumber, firewood, bricks, granite, fish, lime, and now she takes people. She's had three rebuilds during her life, three rebuilds. One in 1900, one in 1930, and one in 1976. 
She's also got a cannon. Janie Regan, the two sons of the captain, Captain Regan, Jacob and Edward. Janie Regan, Delaware Bay Oyster Boat, 1927, Dorchester, Morris River, New Jersey. She's a National Historical Landmark. 1977 converted from an oyster boat to a, a pure sail windjammer. J. E. Regan was a rather well-known oyster boat down in the lower part of New Jersey, the Morris River. She was a fast vessel. They say she was really quick. There's a story about her when the vessels are out, they're all dragging oysters. They had their yo-boats pushing underneath the stern, and here it came. Janie Regan, she was dragging her, her oyster trawl, and her yaw boat was up on the Davids. And she was running wing and wing, passing all the rest of them. A fast vessel, they say. The Janie Regan. But that little vessel coming around Wayfair now, working her way up on the east side. I, she is a cunning vessel, if ever there was a cunning little schooner. I owned her back in the 1960s. A lot of captains started out on the Stephen Tabor. Beautiful, beautiful, handsome little vessel. Built in 1871, she's the oldest commercial sailing vessel, continuously operating, under sail, never had an engine in her. Always a workaday schooner. Worked her way through her entire life, 140 years, she's been working her own way. Never had a government grant or a stimulus package. She's always done it on her own. She has such a history, history as long as her own. Built in 1871, 68 feet on deck. Just a little bit, really, but she's 22 feet wide. And uh, she's a pumpkin seed, 150, 115 feet overall length including her bowsprit. She was originally built in Glenwood Landing, New York, a North River brick schooner. She carried brick, sand, and cement on the Hudson River for years and years on her first job. She had a rebuild in 1899, real fancy rebuild. They, they gussied her all up and she became the first passenger windjammer. In the turn of the century, she was taking passengers out on Long Island Sound. And they had a table, card table, set up under the awning up forward, and they would play, they would play canasta on the schooner Stephen Caber. Back in the 20s and the 30s, depression times, here were all these vessels left over, left over in the coves and on the beaches, needing paint, rigging and festoons, all these wonderful workaday schooners left over from the days of commercial sail. Few of them were saved. The Maddie, the Mercantile, the Grace Bailey, the Victory Chimes, the uh, Louis R. French, the Stephen Tabor, the Timberwind, all of these vessels of the main, the uh, main Windjammer fleet. 